Hello everyone. So welcome back to GateLectures.com. Uh, we are recording the last part of this paper, June 2013, paper 2. So this consists of uh, questions from 31 to 50. The 50 questions were asked in this paper. Right, so without wasting any time, just uh, get back at question 31. Look at the question. They have given four logic families which are MOS, TTL, RTL and RCL and uh, ECL. And they are asking you the current sequence of these uh, logic families in order of their increasing noise margin. Okay. So, uh, one thing that you can remember is, see, uh, you cannot learn specification or uh, values of noise margin for all these families. What you can remember is their relevant uh, noise margins, okay? That is, you can just remember the comparison. Basically, uh, questions from logic families are asked about comparisons only or which logic family has the least or which logic family has the most, okay? These type of questions only are asked. So, you can uh, just remember the relevance. So, uh, one thing that you can remember is MOS has, MOS has highest noise margin, highest noise margin. Okay. Right. And RTL, RTL is having least. Now, if you just arrange using these two only, RTL needs to be on one uh, first number and this needs to to be on the last number you can easily see option b is correct see you cannot remember values of noise margin for all of them even if i tell you the values of noise margin then there is a, a propagation delay there are a lot of characteristics you cannot remember all of these characteristics for each logic family just remember comparative values just remember comparison like mos has the highest noise margin okay then RTL is having very less noise margin. RTL is register, register transistor logic. More, uh, this TTL is transistor transistor logic. ECL stands for emitter coupled logic. Fine. So MOS has the highest and this RTL has the least among all these. So the correct option is going to be option B. Fine. Look at the next question now. What is the current sequence in the generation of PCM? Okay, so PCM is basically pulse coded modulation. We are, what we are doing is we are taking an analog signal and then you are uh, basically converting into a logical uh, digital signal, digital signal and for purpose of transmission. So what we are doing uh, in this uh, generation of PCM is firstly you are going to sample the signal sample the signal means you're going to have some signal like this you're going to take it sample okay this is what sampling is okay multiplying the signal just multiplying the signal with an impulse train so you're going to obtain some samples of the signal then next what do you do you convert it to pam pam is pulse amplitude modulated signal pulse amplitude modulated means you have to allot them values okay so this signal is going to become something like this, okay. It will become something like this. This is what PEM is like, okay. So this uh, signal is going to become something like this. Then you quantize. What is quantization? See, you are going to have some levels, okay. The, there are going to be some levels. Suppose you had 4 or 5 levels of quantization. Suppose uh, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. So all these signals, all these values are going to be allotted to 2 or 1, whatever you are uh, using, okay, whatever c c uh, scheme you are using. That is known as quantization, allotting values to some fixed levels. Quantization is going to take place. Then next, what do you do? You do encoding. Encoding means suppose 2 is going to be coded like 1, 0. 1 you are going to code as 0, 1. 0 is going to be coded as 0, 0, something like this, okay? This is known as encoding. That is, you uh, convert them to some binary values. Encoding is going to take place. And in the end, what do we do? Adding a supervisory signal or some synchronous bits, okay? Supervisory signal is to synchronize the in, uh, signal that you send from the source end with the signal that is being received at the receiver end. So, correct option is uh, going to be correct sequences. Sampling, then converting to PAM, then quantization, then encoding, and in the end, adding a supervisory signal. 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, which is option C. So, the correct answer is going to be option C for this one. Right? Okay. Come to the next question. 
Consider the following logic families MOS, CMOS, DTL and TTL. So this DTL is diode transmission logic and this TTL already you know. Okay. So MOS you have seen this CMOS is complementary MOS. Okay. Uh, metal oxide semiconductor. This stands for metal oxide semiconductor. This stands for complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So now they are asking you current sequence of power dissipation in increasing order. Right. So uh, in the uh, firstly we have to put the logic family which has least power dissipation. Now this CMOS. This CMOS is famous for least power dissipation. It has least power dissipation among all the families. So CMOS is going to be the least power dissipation. See this eliminates two options. C and D are eliminated. right? So uh, I'd suggest you solve these type of questions by this approach only. Okay. You know that this has to be the least one. So two options are eliminated. Now if you see second is going to be MOS only. MOS only. You have no option. L uh, anyway also MOS has uh, the least power dissipation okay more than CMOS but uh, less than all the other families right now if you see uh, next is going to be DTL DTL right and highest power dissipation among all this is going to be for TTL TTL okay now if you just match the options this is going to be 2 1 3 4 which is option A right so the correct answer is going to be option A see there is no scheme you can uh, just uh, uh, understand all this okay this is just theory you have to remember this so just try to remember the comparison that helps a lot okay fine so the correct option is going to be option a right now look at the next question 34 so they're saying that data can be transmitted by following means coax cables mmf this mmf is multi-mode fiber multi-mode optical fiber they're talking about multi-mode optical fiber this smf is single mode so there are basically two kinds of optical fibers, single mode and multi-mode, single mode optical fiber, multi-mode optical fiber, twisted wire cable. Now they are asking you current sequence in the increasing order of bandwidth. So uh, basically see these, these two are both are optical fibers. So optical fibers have been incre uh, introduced only because of this advantage because they have more bandwidth to utilize the bandwidth only and optical fibers have been introduced. Right, twisted wire cables have the least bandwidth, they have been used primitively, now they are not so much in use. So twisted wire is going to have the least bandwidth, then we are having coax cables, coax cables that are, uh, that were being used in your household for dish, okay, the TV, the dish that came into TV, we are using uh, coax cables previously, now they are set up boxes, now we are using satellite communication actually. Right after that comes optical fiber. In optical fiber also, multi-mode fiber has slightly less bandwidth than single mode fiber. Okay, so this single mode optical fiber is going to have the maximum bandwidth, right? This is going to have more bandwidth. So the correct option is going to be option B. Answer to this question is going to be option B, right? So these, uh, see, uh, this is the last question of this model. Basically, they're asking you to arrange things in ascending or descending orders. Five questions of this model uh, will be asked, right? So look at this. This is the last question of this model. After that, we're going to have uh, matching type questions, 10 matching type questions. We'll see them. Consider the following devices, BJT in CB mode. This BJT we have studied uh, thoroughly in analog electronics lectures. If you have any doubt, you can just refer to them. Since this is a big topic, we're not going to take it again. We're just going to see the questions, right? So BJT in CE mode, JFET, MOSFET, and they're asking you current sequence of these devices and increasing or the impedance. So if uh, you've seen the lectures, you'd know that we switch from BJT to JFET and JFET to MOSFET only to have devices with increased impedance, with more impedance. So uh, maximum impedance of all these devices is going to be MOSFET. So MOSFET has to be at the end. So this eliminates these two options. Third is going to be JFET, of course. Now you have to compare that which uh, mode, in which mode either the CB stands for common base, common base, and CE stands for common emitter, common emitter. So you have to compare that in which mode this BJT bipolar junction transistor is going to have more impedance. So we know that in common emitter mode this has more impedance um, than this common base. Right. So the correct order is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 only which is option C. So the answer to this question is going to be uh, option C. 
right this is the increasing order of their impedance right so we using these devices as impedance uh, okay variable impedance only in circuits fine so you would have looked at that in analog electronics if you have any doubts you can just refer to the respective uh, subjects lectures okay because it would not be uh, feasible to explain everything while covering a previous year solution okay so what you can do is if you get any doubt you can just leave us in comments or maybe you can just refer to the lecture of that subject respective subject uh, in the channel fine you can find playlist of each subject separately right so now we are having these uh, matching type questions so basically they are going to give you four uh, options in first list and uh, their uh, properties characteristic use something like that they'll give in the second list and you need to match that fine so you if you just look at this one so this scr semi uh, uh, conductor controlled rectifier scr stands for so this is basically unidirectional okay this is formed scr is formed using a pn junction and np junction diode so we are not going there okay so this works in a single direction this is going to be unidirectional whereas this triac triac has three diodes this is a bi uh, directional device so this is a bi directional device chopper we are using actually for dc drive control dc drive control and the cyclo converter is used in induction motor control this used in induction motor control see uh you might have not heard of all the terms that they are giving in these kind of questions but probably if you have studied your basic analog electronics edc properly you ha you would have heard of scr or triac if you look at the options even if you know about one or two devices right you can just crack the question so don't worry if you have not heard of all the options okay does not matter even if you know one or two na options are going to be such that you can crack the question see here a you would have matched to 3 and b to 4 if you look at options there is only one option with such such uh, matching okay a3 and b4 right even if you have not heard of chopper cyclo converter since these are uh, more of electrical terms not uh, right of electronics so it's okay okay not need to worry they'll match okay you can crack the question still fine so the answer is going to be option c right okay the next question again this is a question from electromagnetics they are asking you about uh, these four laws even if you do not remember the statement of each of the law you do not remember expression you would remember always remember see these two everybody remembers okay uh, anyway four of them are very common you must remember all of them but even if you don't no need to worry okay anyway we are going to look at it now so faraday's law which statement gives faraday's law this del cross e is equal to del b minus del t this is the statement of faraday's law what does gauss law say gauss law says that uh, this uh, del dot d is the charge density is, represents charge density so uh, this is going to be this statement this is ampere's law which is del cross h is equal to j plus del d by del t and this is what the statement of continuity equation is now if you see a2 b1 c4 d3 which is option a right so easy question just asking basics of electromagnetics right so this is what the answer to this question is now look at the next question so resistor is basically variable resistor okay see do not confuse between rheostat and resistor resistor is actually non linear resistance okay rheostat just changes the value of resistance okay 10 ohms 20 ohms 30 ohms something like that resistor is basically non linear resistance okay do not get confused this is variable resistor fine so uh, this is going to match to first one vector diode vector diode what is vector uh, diode it is non linear reactance non linear reactance vector diode is basically variable capacitance fine gun diode gun diode you know that it is using the property of negative resistance using this property of negative resistance is performing amplification All right and pin diode is actually controllable impedance type pin diode is uh, what is this pin diode this is p region this is n region in between them we are having an intrinsic region okay this is how a pin diode is formed fine so this is a controllable impedance type now if you look at the options 
uh, a1 b2 c3 d4 this is uh, option a so the correct answer to this question is going to be option a right come to the next one 39th so clistron clistron is known for bunching see very easy type of questions you are going to get here okay why because just one simple property basic property if you have heard this name now if you know if you have ever heard clistron you would have heard it with bunching only so this is very easy okay very easy to solve fine so clistron goes with bunching right and this uh, reflex clistron goes with velocity modulation velocity modulation magnetron is a cross field device even if you have heard their name you would have heard this together with their name okay gun diode again negative resistance if you just see a2 b3 c1 d4 which is option a option a right so this is going to be the correct answer okay come to the next question now fine so they're asking you about the uh, phenomena that happens so uh, what happens in led Al uh, led is having this spontaneous emission laser we just looked laser what happens in laser is stimulated emission okay what is spontaneous emission recombination of two charge carrier takes place and energy is released that is what happens in spontaneous emission stimulated emission uh, we already seen we no need to see it again solar cell is actually power generator you have seen what happens in the solar cell uh, you might know the functioning okay and photodiode is a uh, light detector it does not produce light it is going to produce current by detecting light if you uh, light it with the torch it is going to produce a current for you okay reverse of what led does fine so if you look at the options a2 b1 c3 d4 which is option b so the correct answer for this is going to be b option right easy questions Okay, so this is a question from uh, 8085 microprocessor. You're given four instructions and they're asking you what these instructions are going to do. Fine. So this DA, DA is decimal accumulator adjust. What it does is it is going to perform decimal addition. If you are performing addition of two numbers, then it is going to provide you answer in decimals. Okay, this is going to give you, this is going to perform addition as it is done in decimals. This is going to treat your inputs as two different decimal numbers and give you answer accordingly. So this is actually an arithmetic instruction performing decimal addition of two numbers, right? This LXI, what does LXI do? This is a data movement instruction. This is actually load pair, okay? This is going to load a pair of registers with some memory location. RST, RST, what does RST do? This RST is actually reset. So RST is an interrupt instruction. This is interrupt. And this JMP, JMP is a program control instruction, program control. What does JMP do? JMP and some address you're going to give. So what happens is their program is going to be shifted to some other memory location, some other address. So this is a program control instruction, right? So if you look at the options A4, B2, C3, D1, A4, B2, C3, D1, which is option B. So the correct answer for this is going to be for B. For question 41 right see even if you know about one or two instructions right you can solve the complete question no need to be worried if you do not know each and everything nobody knows each and everything okay everybody knows something even if you have studied some subjects very nicely right you have prepared them very sincerely you're going to crack no need to worry fine now see look at questions if questions like this come in your exam okay do not panic see 803 when you know you have you've already studied 8085 you've already studied 8086 you know that these are microprocessors right you have seen microprocessors so since you know since you see look at the first two digits 80 which means this is a series of microprocessor or microcontroller now look at the option multiplexer d multiplexer microcontroller decade counter so obviously this 8031 is going to be a microcontroller right this is going to be a microcontroller because you know 8085 8086 already you've studied and these are microprocessor now you've matched a to three this eliminates these two options right the, uh, these two have been eliminated now if you look at the options again this is when you do not remember okay if you do not remember this now if you look these two options have seven four one 
five in their starting seven four one five, which means they belong to a similar kind of family. Now look at the options, mux and demux. Mux and demux are same type of circuit. Counter is a completely different kind of circuit, which means seven four nine zero should be a counter, right? This must be a counter. Okay, so B should match to four, which gives us option A. Okay, this I am telling you because it is not possible to remember each each circuit. You cannot remember what eight zero three one is. You cannot remember what seven four nine zero. There are hundreds of numbers like this. Okay, it is not possible to remember each of them. So this is a trick you can follow. Just solve by elimination then. Now if you see the answer should be A and yes you are right. Answer is actually option A. Okay, so you can solve like this. When uh, you do not remember, do not leave. Okay, try to attempt all, uh, maximum questions. So the answer is going to be option A, and this is how you can solve such type of questions. If you have no clue, you this trick does not work. Better to leave. Okay, than to be awarded negative marks. Better to leave such questions. Do not try to remember all the numbers, all the circuit numbers. You cannot do that. Don't waste your time in that. Okay. Right. Look at the next question now. So this is a question from instrumentation. They have given you diff four different instruments, and they are asking what parameter, what physical quantity they are using to convert to electricity, or you know, uh, some measurement. What are they actually measuring? So, a uh, burden tube. If you have heard, burden tube actually works on pressure. If you apply pressure, it is going to produce some voltage or current to measure it similarly strain gauge if you see this works on stress so this is a physical quantity that uses stress thermistor as the name says is therm this uses temperature see if anything you do not do you must be knowing about thermistor even from the name you can guess this works on temperature lvdt which is linear variable differential transistor this works on distance so this you must have studied maybe so if you look at options this is a3 b4 c2 d1 which is option b so the correct answer is going to be option b for this question right look at the next one now they have given four types of adc and their characteristic they are asking you to uh, match them parallel comparator or flash type adc so this is the fastest converter we have discussed this uh, already this converts uh, converts fastest takes least time and uh, this dual slope is actually the most accurate this is most accurate right so although there is no option like this but still you can remember this dual slope gives most accurate result okay this counter type uses dac in feedback path this is actually adc but uses a dac in the feedback path okay and this successive approximation its conversion time is independent of the input analog signal okay this is going to take same time for each of the signals this in uh, its its uh, conversion time is actually independent of the applied signal and this dual slope is uh, having an integrator in its circuit this is integrating type okay this uses an integrator fine so you look up the options a2 b3 c1 d4 a2 b3 c1 d4 which is option a so the correct answer is going to be option a see we have discussed about all these adc dac counters everything in our digital electronics lecture in a lot of detail if any of you have any doubt or you want uh, to refer you can just go to the channel's playlist go to digital electronics and see lectures of these particular topics okay fine look at the last question of this model so matching model so they saying so they are talking about flip flops now first option is this flip flop a flip flop can be used as a latch so you know that rs rs which is the basic flip flop it has no clock so it can be used as a latch so option a matches to fourth one this flip flop can be used as delay so you can use d flip flop as a basic delay element why because next uh, state of this flip flop next output of this flip flop is actually the input so this is actually just a delay element okay d flip flop has character section q n plus 1 is equal to d which means next state is going to the input so this just provides a delay so this can be used as a delay element this does not have race flip flop so basically master slave flip flop is used only to eliminate this racing problem okay so master slave 
and this can be used as shift registers jk flip flop we are using as shift registers okay so if you look at options a4 b1 c2 d3 this is option a so the correct answer to this one is going to be option a right now in the end we are having this uh, paragraph linked question so they've given you one uh, big paragraph about microwave tubes okay and then uh, next they're going to ask you five questions related to this so uh, you can just pause the video here and go through this uh, information that they have given about microwave tubes twt bwo cfa etc uh, see they're not uh, this is not actually a english uh, type paragraph question you're not going to find the answers in this one you just can read this uh, information to know about what they're talking and then you have to answer the questions that follow you go through this information that they've given and come to the next question now they're asking one of the following is unlikely to be used as pearls device it is so the correct option here is bwo bwo which is backward oscillator so this cannot be used as a pulsed device why because this has a problem of pulse shortening pulse shortening okay any micro device that operates at high frequency is going to have this problem okay so they cannot be used as pulsed device due to the problem of pulse shortening right now look at the next question one of the reason why vacuum tubes eventually fail at microwave frequency so see microwave uh, this vacuum tubes are fail at microwave frequency because their noise frequency increases okay their noise figure increases this increases they are suitable more suitable for suitable for short frequencies short frequencies microwave frequencies are very high okay they are having range of gigahertz so the noise figure is dependent on frequency these uh, noise figure of vacuum tubes depends on their frequency so as frequency increases so much then the noise figure is going to increase if noise figure increases it is not very practical or feasible to use these vacuum tubes so they are suitable for short frequencies right Look at the next question. Multi cavity klystron. So they've given four uh, statements. Has a high repeller voltage to ensure a rapid transit time. Not a good low level amplifier because of noise. Not suitable for pulse operation. Needs a long transit time through the puncture cavity to ensure current modulation. So uh, if you have studied about multi cavity klystron, it is actually not a good low level amplifier because of noise. Noise in this multi cavity klystron decreases as the frequency increases. So we are not using it for low level amplifying. Okay, low level amplification we are not using because noise is going to be too much. So it is better to use it at high level. Okay, more levels. So the correct option is going to be option B for this one. Right, to create the next question, indicate the false statement. Okay, so you have to identify the false statement. They're asking you about klystron amplifier. So they're saying klystron amplifiers may use intermediate cavities. So it is going to have some intermediate cavities. So they're asking for what is it not used. Right, so just look at the statement. Increase the bandwidth of the device, which is true. This is true. Improve the power gain. Yes, it is true. Increase efficiency of the klystron. Yes. Prevent the oscillation that occur in two cavity klystron. This is wrong. This is actually a wrong statement. Uh, so the they are not using intermediate cavities to prevent oscillation that occur in the two cavity klystron, right? So the answer to this is going to be option D. Answer for question 49 is D option. Right. This is the false statement. So we've come to the last question now. Just see. TWT is sometimes preferred to the multi cavity klystron amplifier because the former okay so they are asking you why would you prefer twt over multi cavity klystron amplifier because the former is more efficient greater bandwidth higher number of modes produce a higher output power so we are preferring twt over this multi cavity klystron amplifier because of its bandwidth okay this is an advantage of more bandwidth over this multi cavity klystron amplifier right so uh, the answer to this question is going to be option b Right, so we have covered the complete paper of June 2013, paper 2. So if you have any suggestions, any queries, any doubts, you can leave us in comments. To get complete access to all the video lectures, you can call or WhatsApp at 982-187-6104-02 or email us at admin at gatelectures.com. Thank you for watching. We'll be waiting for your comments, your feedback. 
and if you want us to cover anything else also you can just tell us we'll try our best to do that thank you all the best for your exams